Let me just show you what I'm dealing with right now. You are a tormentor. That's nice. Can you just stay like that? She is a puppy. She is teething. She is biting. She is doing all the puppy things. She is tearing things apart. So she needs to be watched like 24-7. It's like watching a toddler. But you know we're rolling with it. Okay, I didn't say hello. Hi! We're doing a quick little video, a little little tag video. I haven't done a tag in a long time and I love doing tags. I am currently obsessed with D&D, I guess. I've played in a D&D campaign before. I've done D&D one-shots. I'm like, I love D&D. I really want to get back into playing. I have a campaign ongoing, but we took a break and I don't think we've played for about a year now. I've now watched all of The Legend of Vox Machina on Amazon Prime, which is like a D&D campaign turned into an animated show. It's great. I got tagged to do the D&D campaign book tag from Sam and I'm gonna put all the questions and like original creators and everything as well as Sam down below so go check them out. I haven't looked really at any of the questions beforehand so I don't know what's gonna happen. I like to just go into these without knowing much. What is question number one? Everyone's dead. A character with a tragic backstory. My go-to is gonna be Kaz Brecker always for this or even a Nesh works too. Any of the Six of Crows characters really work for this. Let me see if I can think of something else that isn't Six of Crows though. Who just has a horrible horrible life? I don't think there's any group or crew of people that have a more tragic backstory than the Six of Crows. I mean you learn Kaz's story in Crooked Kingdom and it's just a time I think you learn Inej's story in here too, where she was really kidnapped and sold to a brothel. So like, that's pretty horrible too. There's just, there's a lot in here of tragic backstories, so I feel like this is the most common answer, and yet the answer that just makes the most sense. You have a lot of people in here that are just, have a really rough life from the very start and are still having a pretty rough life. And they are just my crow babies and I love them all so, so much. I would be grabbing more books, but now there is another cat on my lap. We'll see. We'll see what I can reach from sitting here. Roll persuasion with advantage and auto buy author. If auto buy was determined by a roll, I would be screwed. My most recent auto buy, the new cover of Stalking Jack the Ripper. I have a whole video talking about the cover and how much I dislike it. But you know, if you want to go check out my whole rant about covers, that's my previous video. But for now, let's talk about Carrie Minascoco and how she is just my auto buy author. Uh, she's my favorite author of all time. This is my favorite series of all time. I will forever like buy anything that she probably puts out. Like there, there isn't much persuasion here. It's it's definitely a roll with advantage. I honestly, if I got a not one, I'd probably still buy it because I'm not like charmed by this author. But you know, it's fine. This was like one of the first YA series that like I truly, truly fell in love with, and I was reading them as they came out, and I was so obsessed. I love Carrie Minascalco's writing too. Uh, Kingdom of the Wicked series is really good. Stacking Jack the Ripper, everyone should go read. It is the perfect, well, I'm not gonna say it's perfect. It has its issues, but it's perfect to be, okay? This is about a young detective couple. My weakness is detective couples, like detectives working together and like there's that banter and like tension as well as like they're trying to literally find a serial killer. So just, I love this book so much. Me and the boy is gonna mess you up. An ensemble cast you love. Okay, well I already talked about the crows. The Lunar Chronicles, the crew, the Lost Rampion crew from Marissa Myers. The Lunar Chronicles. This is Cinder. This is, I literally named my cat Cinder off of this book. I just, the whole Rampion crew, I love very, very much. They are a crew of people that I want to join and honestly I think they'd be great in a D&D &D world. They're, they're a great little crew. Jason is really the only one that I have like mediocre feelings about. Everyone else I love. Kai and Thorn and Cinder and Cress and Scarlet and Wolf, I, they're just, I love them all so, so much. They're like the perfect crew. I honestly, I wish we got to see more of them as a crew together for a lot of the series. They are split up a lot because they are literally like dying. But if I could join this crew, I would in a heartbeat. I rolled a one. Oh, there is a cat, two cats on me. I rolled a one, a character that tries their best but keeps failing. God. Can you give me Percy Jackson? Here we are with another popular series for another answer. Oh my god, I'm the worst. Okay, I need to read more. I need more recommendations. If you have a recommendations for any of these, uh, let me know so that I will read them. A character who I think is constantly rolling in at one is Jason from the Olympians. I love the heroes of Olympus, okay? This is Rick Riordan's second series after Percy Jackson. Does anybody actually like Jason? Like, I feel like he's just constantly getting hit in the face with a brick. I just don't like Jason. I don't like him. He's constantly messing up. He's constantly getting hit in the face with a brick. I feel like if he was in a campaign, he would be the one rolling the net one all the time. 
Just say it. Roll to tame the floof. A book with a dangerous creature you'd love to have as a pet. A dragon or a wyvern. Or, I mean, I guess there's dragons in Avatar too. What would be easier to feed? I'm pretty sure bison just eats a ton of hay, which I think would be a lot easier to come by than a bunch of like, and cheaper than like a bunch of cows for a dragon to eat. I'm showing you the rise of Kyoshi right here. Kyoshi does actually have a sky bison, so I think, I think we're gonna go with that. I do have Roku's book though, so if I wanted to go with dragon, but if we're thinking practically, I feel like an air bison would be a lot easier to feed and maintain than a dragon would. And like people would be like, oh, what a cute little sky bison. And then it like could completely destroy them, you know, because they are incredibly powerful, like 10 ton creatures and they fly and they're cute, you know, and furry and they could be a floof, but still be like a deadly floof. Dragons aren't really a deadly floof, they're just deadly. And I feel like everybody's gonna go with a dragon for this. They're gonna pick like Abraxos or like a dragon from Fourth Wing, and I hate the dragons from Fourth Wing. Hot take. I don't like when dragons talk, okay? Honestly, Toothless, I would choose as a floof too. Toothless movie, Toothless is not an option here. So we're going with a Sky Bison from the world of Avatar. Oh, it says a dangerous creature. A Sky Bison can be dangerous. It's fine. DM rolls unexpectedly. A book that surprised you. The perfect book would be a book I don't own. The book I do own is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldre. Baldre? This fits with a DD and d theme too. Like, if you like D&D, you're gonna love this book. I love this book a lot more than I thought I was going to. Like, it is just a cute little cozy warm time and if you're like a D&D fan, even if you're not a D&D fan, like you're just gonna love this book. It's just a cozy perfect fall book. I thought I was gonna like it but I like fell in love with it so I, I like this is definitely one but I thought of an even better one and that is a book I read via Kindle so I don't own the physical copy. I think this is a book that everyone should read and I was actually forced to read it for my for a book club and I was like not looking forward to reading it at all. I thought I was gonna hate it. I hate literary fiction like I'm just not a fan of it but this book The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa is a it's a translated book from I believe Japanese right literally I was crying for the last like 30% of this book I was like sitting there sobbing reading this book it is a beautiful beautiful book I loved it so so much it completely from it went from I hate this I don't want to read a literary fiction to I'm sobbing the full 30% of the end of this book and it became like a five-star favorite book of mine it is beautiful I suggest everybody read it without looking into it very much and I adore the story so much and honestly it completely shocked me that it became one of my all-time favorite books kind of want to reread it I want I should really buy the physical edition for myself and I think a lot of us when we read it for book club were actually surprised by it a lot of us weren't expecting to like it a lot of us are huge cat people though like there's a lot of cat parents I guess in my book club all of us basically own cats so we all were like sobbing by the end of this book that one's not super popular right I think that's a good recommendation that's not super popular I would like to rage a character with anger issues who, who has some female rage let's get some female rage up in here how about a character that made me rage how do i feel about that how about a character that made me rage where where is she for a character with anger issues i'm literally gonna go with with a demon of wrath i adore wrath daddy wrath as i like to call him this is kingdom of the wicked by carrie mascalco it is the first of three books and then there's two spin-offs each following a different prince of hell you know the Wicked Fall is literally the Prince of Wrath, so he literally is like built to have anger issues because he's just constantly wrathing. And the counterpart female main character also falls in line with his sin, so she's also angry like all the time. There's a lot of anger issues. There's some spice. This is a fun series. Read it. The new book's coming out. It's Carrie Minuscalco. I have to cheer on and if anger issues, wrath, duh. But a little bit different of an answer. Then a character with anger issues is a character who made me have anger issues. <laughs> the main female character from this savage song. This is the only Victoria Schwab series I have read. I read these books so, so fast because I was going to her signing and I wanted to at least have read something by her. I still want to read A Darker Shade of Magic. Is that her? But when I tell you the main female character in this book, I mean, she probably has anger issues too, made me so furious. I literally stopped and like called my sister in the middle of reading this book 
and I was like, are you ever gonna read this book? And she said no, and I was like, okay, let me rant. I ranted about her. It's been a long time since I read this, but I remember being so incredibly angry at the main girl in this series and like just feeling so annoyed by her and hating her so, so much that she caused me to have anger issues. So there's that. That said, I still recommend this book. Liked the main guy a lot in this book, August. Is that his name? I think it is, hold on. It's been a long time. Uh, Kate is the girl and I hate Kate. Kate can go die in a hole. I love August, I love him so much. He's worth everything in this book. He also has a cute little kitty and the cute little kitty, ah! I'm a sucker for a cat in a book, but like, I love him. This is a series like, you get one point of view from a monster versus like a monster hunter kind of person. Uh, Kate is the monster hunter. August is the monster and he kills people with his violin. So like basically he is a bard. Hip thrust for seduction, a spicy book. Ooh, I have a lot of those. Okay, what spicy book do I wanna go with? Do you want like? Heavy spice or a little spice? I know one, I just don't own it. We're gonna mention two books here because I think everybody's talking about Phantasma right now. Phantasma is like Caraval and a Carrie Maniscalco book, Had a Child. Trials and killing and gore and like it's just fun and honestly Danny Phantom vibes and it is a great book. I gave it four stars. I honestly might up it up to five if I'm feeling saucy, you know? It literally says Carvel meets Throne of the Fallen. Yes, it's a fun time. It's a spicy time too. Uh, if we want another spicy book, that wasn't the one I was thinking of, but I read that book recently, so it's like on my mind. Karina Hall, she writes a lot of spicy books. River of Shadows is the one I was thinking of. I read this last year, I think, yeah. May of 2023, and I'm still thinking about it, I guess. Uh, there's two books out. We're still waiting on the third book. I think it was, like, delayed or pushed. But I like this because it's kind of a Hades and Persephone retelling, but it's using Welsh gods instead, or Swedish gods. Like, it's Scandinavian, I think. Maybe it's not Welsh. Finnish. There we go. It's using Finnish mythology and, like, making it spicy. And so, like, it, it's Hades. It gives Hades and Persephone, if you're into that kind of, like, Hades and Persephone trope. He is, like, the evil god. Can't touch her. He has to wear these gloves because whoever he touches just, like, dies. And so she goes into the realm of dead looking for her father, I believe, and ends up striking this deal with the god of death. There is a very vivid scene that I remember from book two. There is a, oh, it's probably one of the spiciest scenes I've ever read in book two. So there's that. There's also the whole Zodiac Academy series, which I read this year too. So that's a time. I was going to do a whole video on the Zodiac Academy. Now I think I've lost my Zodiac Academy grind thoughts, feelings. I'll do it in my wrap up of the, of the year. Unless you want a Zodiac Academy video. Do you want a Zodiac Academy video? Let me know. Cause I could, I could film it. I could. How do you want to do this? A book with a satisfying ending. Ugh, I love that one. A lot of endings I'm not satisfied with. I really don't like the trope of... How do I say this without spoiling anything? I really hate the trope of throughout the whole series, the female main character is talking about how they don't want to get married, they don't want to have kids, and this, 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 and then at the very end, it's suddenly they throw that all out the window, and now they're married and have like seven children. I hate it. In a lot of series, I feel like end like that, and I hate it. And like, my go-to would be a Carrie Maniscalco book, but honestly, my main issue with a Carrie Maniscalco book is I usually don't like how they end, and that's with a lot of books. A lot of my favorite series, I am not satisfied with how they end. I like duologies. I like how duologies end. I don't know if that says something about me. Our Violet Ends by Chloe Gong. This is a Shakespeare Romeo and Juliet retelling and I adored these two books. I really liked them. I think uh, what's so perfect about a duology is there isn't a middle book void. Like you know how the middle book always like goes down and it's lighting up the big finale. I just I like a good duology. I usually really like how duologies end. I mean I love how Crooked Kingdom end too but I already chose Six of Crows so like I just, it just made me realize I really like how duologies end. I mean, this, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, this is a beautiful duology, and if you want to continue on, you can. There is a separate series that you can read, which I also really enjoyed, but, like, these two books were really great. Ending is very open, and it is a Romeo and Juliet retelling, so, like, you know, but it's very, there's a very open ending, and I kind of really like it. Another one I thought of, which I really just like duologies, I guess, is Fable and Namesake by Adrienne Young. This also has a prequel you can read called Saint, which I liked, but like, it wasn't as good as the first two. I remember this one being pretty open too. I'm also in a very like Pirates of the Caribbean mood right now, so like, 
pirate mermaid retellings I really want right now. There's no mermaids in this. Also not a pirate retelling, but like they're a crew on a ship, so whatever. I don't know, I love a good duology. I think they end really well most of the time because they tend to have that open ending to them. We can leave it a little bit open and I love those kind of endings. So gather your party and tag three friends. Um, I'm not actually, I don't, I don't have any friends to tag. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you really want to do this, do it. You're, you're now my friend and I am gathering you into my party and now you're going on this quest with us. Uh, tag me if you do it and say I tagged you. You're now part of my party. Welcome. Thank you so much for watching this chaotic, chaotic, chaotic video. I adore all of you so much. Go play some D&D. Go play some Baldur's Gate. Go have some fun doing some silly stuff and roll for it, I guess. I always have, I feel like I always have the same answers. So give me some recommendations for some of these props of prompts of books that you like and I will try reading them even better if they're fantasy or have that D&D element that I love. I wonder if anybody's taken a campaign that they've had and like turned it into a book. Probably, right? I imagine it's have happened. Thank you so, so much for watching. The next couple videos are going to be vlogs, so they're going to be long and vloggy and stuff like that. I adore you. Have a great rest of your night. 